Good evening. First tonight, the future role of Jersey's bailiff could be decided in a public vote. In the last hour, politicians have agreed a proposal to hold a referendum on whether to separate his powers as both state's speaker and the island's head judge. But the votes will only happen if members now agree plans to introduce an elected speaker instead of the bailiff. Well, Hannah Bechelet has been following today's debate and joins us live from Jersey's Royal Square now. Hannah, a long day in the States. Yes, a long day of debating, but perhaps not quite what the chief minister was hoping that would be debated. He's brought a proposition that would mean that the bailiff stops being the head of the state and instead an elected speaker is put there instead. But instead of debating that today, states members have been debating an amendment that will see a referendum held on the issue. In the past hour, they've agreed to hold that referendum if the rest of the proposition is decided. So here is what's been discussed in the States today. The bailiff's future as head of Jersey States is in question, but who should vote on his fate? I think the referendum is vital. This is a constitutional change to our history uh, and to our Assembly. It's a matter for the State's Assembly. We're elected to make key decisions uh, like that, and uh, whoever the Speaker is is a matter for a future Assembly. Whether it should be states' members or the public who decide the bailiff's future has been the discussion in the states today. The role started in the 13th century. This is the earliest footage we have of anyone as bailiff back in the 1950s. And as this clip from the 1970s shows, the role has been important in Ireland life. But the bailiff's role has also been controversial. That's because as well as presiding over the state, he also presides over the courts. And there have been many calls over the years to separate those two powers. That latest call came in the independent care inquiry. And the chief ministers followed this up with a proposal to replace the bailiff in the states with an elected speaker. That would bring Jersey more in line with the UK. Order! And that's the issue that's been on the order paper in the States today. But before members could get to it, they had to decide if there should be a referendum on the bailiff's role, something that split politicians. It's not a constitutional issue, it's a political issue. And I think the bailiff of Jersey is an incredibly important office, the first citizen um, in any order of precedent. But it must be surely time to evolve our constitution, our democracy, so that we have that elected speaker. And this is not the subject of a referendum. I think for the majority of people who don't give this everyday thought like we do, it, it, they haven't even really focused on it and a lot of them don't understand the issues. And, and I think really um, until we've done a really a much better job of educating the public on what they need to be considering, then we're on a hiding to nothing with a referendum. At this time I'm in favour of retaining Bailiff as the President of the States Assembly. But if the public were to guide us in a different direction, in a referendum, then I undertake to follow that. And the majority of politicians agreed with the senator. In the last hour, members voted for a referendum to be held. So, Jersey could be facing its third referendum in five years, this time over the fate of the island's first citizen. Well, we'll find out tomorrow if that referendum is taking place. We did actually do a poll on our own website today to see if you wanted a referendum on the issue. 57% of you said no, 48, 42% sorry, saying yes. Well, the man who's responsible for bringing that proposition and the amendment to the table is Senator Sir Philip Balash, who joins me now. Senator, why did you want that amendment and the referendum to be on the table? Well, I think this is a very important constitutional issue. The uh, bailiff has been the president of the states uh, ever since the states came into existence. And there are constitutional implications if the bailiff were removed from the presidency, which were explained during the debate today. Some people did say that you just brought this idea of the referendum to try and wreck the proposition. What would you say to that? I would say that's absolutely wrong. And the... Uh, uh, evidence of that is that I'm going to vote for the Chief Minister's proposition tomorrow because I think that this uh, controversy has gone on too long. I think it's beginning to become harmful to the institution of the bailiff's office and I think it's right that the public should have the opportunity to express their views as to whether the bailiff's role should change or whether it should remain and so I think um, that a referendum is the only way to do that. 
Lots of people in the States talking today about whether people cared and whether we'd be able to have a meaningful referendum. Do you think that people know enough about the role of the, the bailiff to actually vote meaningfully? Well, we are a very um, different community from the one that we were 50 years ago. And uh, we're a much larger community and there are lots of people who've come from other places who may not understand the history and traditions of the island. But I think that this, is, this would be an opportunity actually to engage the people in the constitution of the island, to explain what the history is, to explain on both sides of the argument uh, uh, the issues so that people can make a reasoned decision. How long will it put, if we vote, if people vote and say no, they don't, they don't want the bailiff to leave, they want to keep him in the States, how long will it put the discussion off for? Well, probably not forever because these are controversial issues which tend to be raised uh, again and again. But uh, as with the referendum on the position of the constables, I think that nobody today would uh, propose that the constable should no longer sit in the States. And uh, that issue has been put to bed for a little while. And I think it would be the same with the bailiff. OK, thank you very much. Well, we'll find out tomorrow if that referendum does take place. Thank you, Hannah. In other news tonight, a third of children aged 10 and 11 in Jersey are either overweight or obese. That's according to latest figures. The same applies for one in five four- and five-year-olds. The figures show weight problems among young people in the island haven't improved since 2011. They also show children living in built-up areas are more likely to be overweight than those living in the countryside. A man armed with a knife and threatening to harm himself was tasered by police in Jersey last night. It happened at around half 11 in the area of Convent Court in St. Elia. The 30-year-old was assessed by paramedics and police say he wasn't injured. He remains in police custody. The force says they voluntarily referred the incident to the Jersey Police Complaints Authority. An independent report has made seven recommendations on how vulnerable children in Guernsey are supported through legal proceedings. Ofsted have carried out a review of the island's Family Proceedings Advisory Service and says more needs to be done to prevent cases being delayed. It also suggests a specialised practice manager should be appointed. But the report also praises the service's staff, saying they're dedicated and highly motivated. Next tonight, Jersey's newly appointed CEO has told ITV News he can't rule out cutting jobs when he starts his new role. From January, Charlie Parker will be the highest earning states employee on a salary of £250,000 a year. Well, this morning he addressed 100 senior civil servants outlining his new vision for the states. Although he praised staff for their hard work, Mr Parker has already highlighted poor structuring within the organisation. Daniel Skitt reports. Times are still tough in Jersey, so during a period of pay freezes and job cuts, this new appointment shocked many last month. Obviously they weren't successful in the past, so what makes this any different? Today the man who took up this controversial 250k post spoke to us. How can you guarantee to our viewers that this is going to be money well spent? Well, any large organisation, you know, our budget's over £700 million a year, uh, is going to employ people that they pay large salaries to. And it's not unusual, it's not something that I'm not used to. I've been paid significant salaries in previous jobs, which, uh, you know, you end up being held accountable to. There is going to be pressure on you. There's pressure uh, which comes with any high-profile job like this, and I'm used to that. But he won't be the only new face in this building. Four senior civil servants earning up to £1,300 a day have also come over from the UK and they're already helping him draw up a plan. How are you going to transform the states? If we say in three years' time, what's going to be different? So let's be clear, I've not started yet. Um, I've been doing some transition time a couple of days a week. And but you've your early January. indications. You've, you've probably got ideas already, I would have thought. I think that there are some things that we could do better. Uh, no. We're clear that there's probably um, not a single organisation and there is quite a heavy top tier in the organisation. Would you say money is being wasted at the moment? I don't know enough yet, and that's what the due diligence is about. But what I think we could do is be more effective and efficient. So there is duplication. And there are things that we do more than once. If we're going to get things right first time, we need to make a point of difference in the way in which we conduct our business 
to that that we're doing at the moment. Mr Parker has previously managed several councils in the UK. His last role was CEO of Westminster City Council, managing thousands of government employees in the country's financial heart. Would you describe yourself as a businessman? I think I'm much more commercial than most public servants and I have a reputation going back 20 odd years for that. So I see us as a business. So we don't give a return in monetary value, we give a return in the way in which we conduct ourselves. But are you a businessman like say, for example, Donald Trump? Are you someone who will come in, make big changes? There'll be people who are working for the states at the moment who will be worried about their jobs. A job's gonna be cut. Jobs may change. And that, there's no point in hiding from that, but that's not the key driver here. Efficiencies can come from technology. Efficiencies can come from doing things once. And effective, efficient services operate in a number of levels. Swapping the big city for the island life might sound like an easier ride, but with budgets tightened and an election round the corner, it will be a busy first year in the job for this man. Daniel Skip, ITV News.